Hi, I'm Ian Harris and this is the Crossfire Investigator video. Crossfire is an NHMRC funded multi-centre randomised trial that compares volar locked plating to closed reduction and plaster for displaced dorsally angulated collies fractures in patients aged 60 and over. The aim of this presentation is to introduce you to the Crossfire study and take you through it, but it's also a reference site for investigators to come back to. So the presentation is in sections and these are the sections that you're going to see and each section has an orange bar to the left so that you can easily scroll forwards and backwards in the video to find the section that you want. So the background, we know that distal radius fractures, college fractures are common, particularly in people over 50 or 60. And traditionally they were treated with plaster, but surgical fixation using volar lock plating um, has become the preferred method of treatment in many institutions. Comparative studies have not shown a clear advantage to surgical fixation. And so we need to do this high quality study to determine whether the risks and costs of surgery are justified. The primary aim of the study is to look at wrist pain and function after operative treatment compared to treatment in plaster for patients aged 60 and over. The secondary aims are to look at safety and cost effectiveness of each treatment. Participants must be aged 60 or over and have a displaced dorsally angulated distal radius with one of these three things, either more than 10 degrees dorsal angulation, three millimetres of shortening or two millimetres of articular step. They must be fit for surgery um, and they must not be in a nursing home. They should not have another injury that affects the use of the wrist for example, if they need to use crutches. And it has to be a low energy injury, a fall from less than one metre, and they should be available for follow up. The exclusion criteria is if they uh, can't provide consent because of uh, dementia or English proficiency, volar angulation, diaphyseal extension, uh, partial articular fractures like a Barton's fracture are not included. Um, so it's just really type A or type C fractures, not the partial ones. Um, and any other significant injury to the upper limb, but obviously a uh, ulnar styloid fracture is allowed, open fractures are out, and previous fractures mean they're excluded. Um, so for eligible participants, you've got to provide them with the participant information sheet for the randomised arm, and you can direct them to the video on the website which tells them about the study, and this is actually directed at potential participants. Um, I'll give you a link to that at the end. Um, you've got to invite them to participate and uh, give them the opportunity to ask questions and you need to not um, commit to one particular surgery. The idea is that there is equipoise in the community and that means that in the community, not you personally, in the community, we don't know whether one treatment is better than the other. And so it's not really fair to say to them, well, I think you should have plating or I think you should have plaster. You have to say, we don't know. And if they ask you which is best, you have to say, well, we don't know. And this is why we're doing the study. Now, if they don't want to be randomized, um, nearly all patients are expected to participate in the observation alarm. And that means that their treatment will be dictated as per usual, according to the surgeon's preference or, or, or your preference or the patient's preference. But they'll still be followed up. And it's important to point out that the follow-up um, is really just by phone. So it's not a big commitment for them. Um, either way, you need to get written consent. And this is separate to the consent for surgery or closed reduction. And you should get that first. For randomization, you have to get that after consent. Once they've consented to the study and they've signed up for either a plaster or plating, you then uh, use a computer-based randomization service and dial 13000 cross. And you have to have the code number for your hospital because you have to punch that in and then punch in numbers for gender and age. And the computer at the other end will tell you what group they've been randomized to. Um, volar locked plating, if they get randomised to that or if they choose that in the observation alarm, um, it needs to be performed within two weeks of the injury 
and the technique and the type of plate you use is surgeon preference. And a lot of people use a plaster uh, for two weeks afterwards until the wound is checked and the sutures are removed. Um, and we encourage active, active finger movement over that time. Um, and they normally get reviewed at two weeks and then they get reviewed at six weeks. And we will need copies of their pre-reduction uh, x-rays, their post-op x-rays and their six-week x-rays sent to us. The control group is a closed reduction of plaster, preferably done in the emergency department, but it can be done in an operating room if that's what is needed at your hospital. And it needs to be performed by an orthopaedic surgeon or registrar. Um, regardless of the alignment and regardless of what the x-rays look like at one week, this is the treatment. There is little to be gained from re-manipulating or converting them after a week or two. Um, and then the cast should only be on for six weeks. And again, they get an x-ray at six weeks. And there's a home exercise program and a um, exercise sheet to give them. Um, the baseline measures we get uh, age, gender, and things like that. And it's all part of a form that you're going to get them to fill out and you're going to partially fill out as well. And then you need to send it to us. Um, the primary outcome for the study is the PRWE, which is the patient rated wrist evaluation. We're measuring that throughout at three months, 12 months, 24 months, but the primary outcome point, time point is 12 months. And there's lots of secondary outcomes, which is the uh, DASH, uh, quality of life scores, pain scores, uh, bother index, patient reported success, x-rays, uh, use of physio, things like that. And this is a participant flow sheet, so um, I'll take you through it. Um, uh, so you've got a patient who fits the inclusion criteria, right? They've got the right type of fracture. Um, then you um, inform them about the study and you ask if they want to be randomised. And if they want to be randomised after reading the sheet or seeing the video, then you need to get consent to be in the trial and consent for any surgery or closed reduction before randomization. Because if you get the consent for surgery afterwards and they decide, oh, they don't want surgery now they've read the consent and you've already randomized them, um, it's not good for the study. And uh, so you call that number and then they're in the randomized arm. If they don't want to be randomized, then you give them the information sheet for the observational arm. And most patients I expect to consent for that and then they're on the observation arm, and it's the same deal. Um, the only difference is their treatment is not dictated by chance. They still fill out the forms, we still follow them up at exactly the same time periods. If they don't want to be involved in the study at all, they're just not on the study. So there's a lot of hospitals involved in this, and each site has a site investigator and site coordinators. I've got a list of them on the next slide. If you have any questions, these are the three main people to contact. So there's me and that's my mobile. Arazu is the trial coordinator who's employed full time to do this. And Andrew is the PhD student. And you can call any of us on uh, uh, by phone. We'd be happy to speak to you. Um, this is a list you can uh, look at which uh, just covers all the uh, uh, main investigators and study coordinators at each of the sites. And that's it. Thanks for listening.